Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this evening's West Shore Photography Club meeting. It is April the 11th, 2022, and we have an image review tonight. But before we get to that, a few other notes. Uh, I'd like to recognize our newest members. I did introduce uh, Lori Dandy, who's on board uh, you know, at a previous meeting. Welcome, uh, Lori. Hope you got some good pictures on Saturday at Kiwanis Lake. Uh, Lynn Garwood uh, also joined our group recently, and she's the leader down in uh, Lancaster and York, those groups. And then uh, Janet uh, Ashurst has also joined. Is Janet on board? Let's see, we talked to her at the end of last meeting, but I didn't get to do introduce, don't see her on board. But those folks uh, have also joined the Facebook group and we welcomed them there. So if you see Lynn, Janet, and there's Lori, you know, uh, say hello to those folks. Uh, next week, okay, Easter Monday, no meeting. Okay, no meeting next week, that's April the 18th. Uh, and then our next regular meeting will be the next Monday, which is April the 25th. And Joe is going to conduct a live image processing session. Okay, those always go over very well. He'll ask you to send him uh, uh, some images and then he'll process them online, show you how he would handle them. And he always does an excellent job with that. Okay, but uh, this Wednesday, the day after tomorrow, we have a trip to Harrisburg beginning at 7.30 p.m to do urban night photography. And this is a follow-up session uh, from Jurgen's presentation last Monday night. Karen Cummings will be uh, leading that. And she's got some able assistance in Curtis, Curtis Wilkie and uh, Mark Albano. So I don't think Karen's on board, don't see her, uh, but it should be a very interesting trip. And uh, I'll get an email out tomorrow morning with the specifics. I think one already went out earlier, but a reminder with uh, all the details. Okay. All right. Tonight, image review. We have uh, 16 images. Lori Snyder is going to review these for us. Uh, the theme is peeling paint. Uh, so, Lori, why don't you uh, take a moment to introduce yourself? Just tell them a little bit about what you do, and uh, you can share your screen, and we'll get uh, this show on the road. Okay. Let me... Oh. Yeah, Lori and I both teach at Calc. And you, do you have a class right now or do you just finish up? Yeah, um, I have one and we have like a couple weeks left to go. So just, um, yeah, is that, are you seeing yeah. my screen? Yeah, yeah. And if you then, then you just want me to put it in full. Full screen, super dandy. Yeah. Yeah, so I, um, just, it's just a beginner class. I do want to try and integrate more classes. Um, you know, maybe something more along the lines of, um, you know, create, you know, creative uh, photography and things of that nature to kind of, uh, you know, get everybody thinking a little bit outside of the box in the class and maybe pick up from where I left off with the other classes. So I know you have a couple over there, so. Very good. Yeah, and I've got, uh, well, let me just interrupt for a second to self-promote a little bit here. <laughs> I've got uh, a Photoshop for Photographers class that starts Wednesday evening, okay, at 6.30. You can still sign up for that. That's through Calc. And on Thursday morning, this is a little different, going to do a morning class in person at Calc. Starts at 10.30 in the morning on macro photography. And we're going to share photos. We're actually going to shoot Okay, during the class session, and we're going to tie that in with the, you know, the, the theory about what equipment to use and, you know, what techniques to use and all that stuff. So both of those are through Calc. If you have any questions, you know, shoot me an email or give me a call. Okay, Lori, back over to you. Okay. So peeling paint is the theme for tonight. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull up the first image. Very good. And we'll do as we usually do is that uh, you can give your critique comments. And then we will ask the photographer for uh, comments. Okay. But but not really open it up to the entire membership uh, until the very end. All right. Is the first image up then? Yes. Okay. So first one is witness. Um, so to me, when I look at this, uh, I, what I really enjoy about it is it, it appears to be like a vintage wallpaper, perhaps. Um, 
And so, you know, the cut between the colors and then also the way that it's both um, un <clears throat> the unpeeling section and then the section that's peeling, as well as seeing perhaps some of this um, plaster wall underneath, as well as some of the gouge marks that came with uh, that also are in the wall itself. Um, <clears throat> and along with the title, it kind of gave me a sense of story and place. Uh, just it kind of, and it reminded me of the song. If it is wallpaper, what it kind of reminded me of is the song um, "If These Walls Could Talk" by Nancy Griffith. You know, because with the aging of the wallpaper and along with the title, you know, it just you can imagine that it was witness to many stories unfolding. You know, is that enough? Uh, in the room. Oh. Is that I'll enough? Take, I'll take okay. care of it. <laughs> Um, I wasn't sure if it was just a tiny bit, uh, if it needed a little bit of sharpness, uh, if it was just, there was a little bit that there were some areas that were a little soft, um, where the wallpaper was coming away. Um, and then also I, I wasn't sure as far as the square format is concerned. I didn't know if it would lend better to division of the peeling and the unpeeling space. I feel like it's almost divided in half. Um, so I just thought maybe it could, um, one of the things, because there's so much interest in this space that I thought one of the things could be that um, maybe just play with the cropping a little bit. And I also uh, thought maybe doing like a counter clock, uh, maybe even just flipping the image and seeing it and viewing it from different ways um, as opposed to um, uh, straight on like this. So I just thought it would add a little bit more movement to the image itself, but I really love the richness of the color and all of the peeling. Um, and I just think maybe a tighter crop, kind of really honing in on some of these peeling areas while keeping in some of the paint on the wall, uh, some of these uh, designs on the wall. Um, yeah, so that's, kind of my impression of the, the Im this image. Okay, yeah, very good. Uh, would the uh, photographer please unmute him or herself and comment? Yeah, this is uh, Dave Marchetto. Thanks very much, Lori. Sure. This is um, actually genuine peeling paint. Um, it's, it's actually from a, uh, an old antique stool. Oh. And, yeah, yeah. What's what's sort of interesting is the composition at six feet away is a lot different than what I ended up at. You know, it's it's six inches. So I I kind of wish I had an earlier um, you know version for you to to maybe get your thoughts. Um, and you know, it's it it is soft. I I think it's because it's so close that, um, you know, my playing, you know, depth of field just maybe just wasn't, uh, you know, deep enough. So, uh, yeah, I thought of that too. It's, it's a little bit more in focus, I think, on, uh, on the right, but it's a huge uh, zoom in. And I, 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 um, I uh, really appreciate your thoughts, um, you know, especially rotating and, you know, kind of playing with crops, you know, that's very helpful. Sure. Okay. Thanks, Dave. Okay, paint past tense. So a little bit of levity in there uh, because there's really not a whole lot of paint left on this old farmhouse. Um, so it, when I first looked at it, you know, it just really has the feel of a, a you know, a watercolor. It's just kind of very soft, um, not a lot of uh, detail on the house as far as on the paint itself, you know, um, and it just really has a sense of its age. Um, and there's so much detail in to take in, you know, from the boarded up window to this open door, um, even the way that the posts on the porch are kind of propped up and just, I think there's a little bit of wood exposure underneath as well as the rusted roots, uh, the rusted roof. And so I thought that it was really interesting, um, just has a, that sense of, you know, the bucolic um, Americana kind of feel. And I also like the way that it's um, really trapped, like kind of within the tree and almost as if they're growing together. And it just gives it a sense of like permanence and how long it's actually been there, despite the fact that it's kind of wearing down. 
Um, so I do like the the way that it feels like a watercolor but then there was another part of me that thought you know with the peeling of the paint theme if it was darkened a little bit and brought in a little contrast and it actually um too would really lend itself nicely to a black and white image um but then it just kind of changes the overall feel of it it wouldn't quite have that paint that watercolor feel about it but it does bring out like a little bit more of the shadow and really gives a sense of some of the uh, fading paint and some of the creases and the panels in the house. And then the only other thing that I considered is maybe cropping a little bit of the bottom of this grass off. Um, I didn't know if it needed to have quite as much grass in the foreground, um, you know, as far as the division of the frame is concerned. Um, let's see. Yes. So I think that's everything. I think I covered everything <laughs> for this one. All right. Can we hear from the photographer? Yeah, it's Rich. <clears throat> Rich Carr. Thanks, Laurie. Yeah, this is uh, this was an interesting one for me because it's a it's an old country store. Wasn't I just grabbed yeah. it? I, I've seen this a million times. <laughs> it's next to the farm that my wife's grandparents owned where her mother grew up. And this was a gathering place on Saturday nights for dancing and all kinds of things, whatever. Yeah. I love this. And I happen to catch it at a time of the day, kind of near a sunset. I like the kind of color. I, I, was, I didn't think about black and white. I should look at it, but I like your comment about the contrast on it as well. So, but uh, thanks for your comments. Appreciate it. Sure. Okay, bricks don't peel. <laughs> um, Okay, so what I appreciated about this one, well, first of all, if the bricks don't peel, I, uh, the juxtaposition of the two things, just kind of conveying how uh, solid and foundational the bricks appear. And of course, they're not peeling and they're very structured. Where this, you know, you can see just the erosion and the, the fading uh, away of, of the paint. And even under here, you can kind of see a splitting of the wood. So, you know, the title in and of itself really lends to, you know, the brick just stands strong in the fortitude of it. And then you can just really get a sense of the decaying and wearing away of the wood on this. Um, I like the complementary nature of the colors. Um, and I also like the triangulation that's happening here. There's a triangle over here with the brick. And then there's a triangle down here. And then it just really, which really lends to um, making this front and center and just really paying attention to the cracking and the peeling. Um, and the, the, the depth of field also really lends to that because the way that this is kind of off focus, out of focus, and then this again is just super sharp. So all of that kind of lends to really concentrating your eye in this area. Um, there's a part of me that was kind of curious about maybe trying a different kind of prop where, um, this angle would be a little bit different and maybe the um, wood would kind of come right around in this area, but I don't know what it looked like, the area looked like and how you, you know, had the possibility of being able to change it. Cause I know sometimes you're kind of limited with that. Um, and then also um, I just wasn't sure if this little line here was necessary to finish it or if it could do without it. I kind of viewed it both ways just to kind of see. And um, I think it works nicely without it. And I'm not sure, I, I don't know. I, the, I, it's one of those images that I look at and I can't tell if I think it would make a better photograph with or without it, or if it can, it's fine just to stay. So I'd be curious about um, whoever shot it to kind of say, you know, what their impression of that was as well, so. Okay, let's get their impression. Yeah, it's my picture, uh, Jim Berlinger. Uh, I was going to ask you about that line on the left if you didn't bring it up, Lori. <laughs> I, I kind of so liked it as, as a frame, but I like, and I want to cut it off because it's a distraction. Right. This was at the New Kingstown Market. It was actually on the sidewalk uh, with a pretty long lens. Uh, knew we had this coming up, grabbed the picture, so your thought about pulling the wood down uh, wasn't possible. That's what I was thinking, but I just, yeah. But I just kind of wanted to see maybe just with not, uh, without quite as much of an angle up 
in it, but um, yeah. I mean, I still think this works though because of the triangulation in each corner. Yeah, I can, I'll try it again, cross the street a little further out, which should bring that angle down a little bit and see what I get. I appreciate your comments, thank you. Sure. Yeah, Lori, any comment on the depth of field? You, ha you, you like it as it is, or would you like a little more extended depth of field? No, well, I, I think it really, because of the depth of field, I think it really made this the center of attention. Um, you know, the only other thing I did think about is just lightening this area, which doesn't have to do with the depth of field necessarily, but just kind of being able to see underneath in this area a little bit more. I thought okay. that was nice. Um, but as far as, yeah, I just felt like for what the subject matter was of the peeling paint, I felt like the depth of field kind of lent to just kind of really concentrating in what the subject was about. Good, thanks. Thank you. Am I going too fast? Should no, I, you're am fine. I? Okay. You're fine, <laughs> I <don't... yeah. laughs> okay. Um, fables of Fauci. Let's see. All right. So um, I'm assuming this is one of those abandoned with the title with Fauci. I'm assuming it has to do, it's an abandoned medical facility possibly, but then this kind of gives it a jail kind of vibe to it. So I'm not really sure, but um, I like, there's really nice leading lines coming from here and coming from here and just in general and just kind of really focusing in this corner over here. Um, and, uh, you know, of course, and with any of these things, you know, that feeling of abandonment and decay and kind of destruction, and it has like a nice range of tonal, uh, you know, there's the blacks and it has some grays and then you see little spots of white. So it has a nice tonal range to it. Um, the only thing with this um, is that I could see that there's a little bit of, you know, and grain you can use and you know, I know that sometimes when you're working in the shadows and you're trying to bring a little bit more detail into the shadow, you know, you can see a little bit of that um, graininess in through this area. And I guess for me, I'm not sure if that was quite necessary. Um, I feel like there, and I also felt like there was kind of this division of the bottom half being kind of light and the upper half being kind of dark. And when I darkened it just a little bit, um, there was this really nice highlight and kind of gave it this darkened down in here and you lost a little bit of this um, graininess, but you could still see the sense of this art while a really nice um, highlight came through this area. And so it kind of lent to the air of mystery in, of the place. And then also to balance that out, making this just a little bit darker in the bottom and then bringing out some detail. There's some really nice um, peeling paint up in this area as well as maybe bringing out a little bit more detail in the ceiling. And then it kind of created a balanced image throughout. And again, it just really, it, you could just really see a natural light cast right in this section right here, which was really, really nice. So, but I love the overall feel of the image. All right, can we hear from the photographer? Yeah, hi, this is Chris D'Amico. Thanks for your comments. Yeah, that was shot at the Penhurst, um, a hospital, you know, it closed in 1987. Now, it was like one of my first attempts at like doing some light painting and stuff. Oh, and okay. I, yeah, so I, uh, it was, it was actually very dark in there. And uh, there might have been another photographer in, in a room in the back. So it was a little hard to, um, you know, well, I actually didn't know exactly what I wanted. I'm, you know, I was just experimenting and seeing what I could, could come up with. And, uh, but I'll try that darkening it up down at the bottom because yeah, I, I can see it. I um, think I tried to bring out the, the, the uh, bed there or whatever it's called. And uh, I should have gone back and darkened that down again. But oh, I guess that is a bed. Now I see, I see that elevated right there. Yeah, yeah. okay. So that's like a bed that you can adjust, I guess. <laughs> yeah, once upon a time. Yeah. <laughs> No longer. <laughs> All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, Chris, what did you use for your light source uh, when you were light painting? Just a flashlight? Yeah, it was just a flashlight. And uh, yeah, I just took a bunch of shots and tried, you know, I, I can't remember. It was like a few months ago. It was back in when it was kind of, I guess, early October. Yeah. Well, light painting certainly is an experimental process. It's hit, hit or miss. 
<laughs> yeah. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Okay. Um, ain't that appealing? <laughs> so um, I like the depth of field in, the, in this image, and I like the way that it directs your eye through the frame. And, you know, there's just this little curl of paint here. Um, and then again here. And again, the depth of field does help to kind of really focus your eye where the sharp areas are. Um, and I, the complementary colors, I found with a lot of these rust ones, it seems that there's a lot of complementary colors. It's like everything that the, um, the, the underside always seems to have more of this like burnt orange color. And then there's always like this bluish color. So I thought that was interesting. Just a personal um, observation. Um, but again, these lines just really take your eye back through this. Um, the only thing that I was um, considering about this is maybe to have a little bit less of this left side so that there's not, it's not competing. Cause I did find myself sometimes wanting to, to look at this um, blurry area. So maybe just a little less of that. Um, or else I also considered what I want to see, maybe just a little bit of a lower vantage point, but see a little bit, I don't, again, these are things where I don't know if, you know, what's going on past this section back here, but you know, would it, would it lend to it to see a little bit more of the wall, maybe have a lower vantage point and to really direct your eye um, further back the wall or come away a little bit from the wall. Um, just again, areas that I would play with, uh, I don't, I'm sure, I'm wondering if you have like a few versions of this. Um, so, and, and also, I also thought you could do maybe a tighter crop. I, I was kind of in either one direction. I either wanted to see a tighter crop or maybe a looser crop so that um, I could see a little bit more. I apologize. He snuck his way in the room. Okay. So a tighter crop in this area. He Excuse me one second. Go out. You're not coming in here. Kick, kick. That's what happens when you adopt a, a barking dog. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. Okay, whoops. I didn't mean to go on to that. All right. Um, so, um, and also, that was that. Okay, now that was carried on from that. Okay, so that was kind of my impression of this image. Okay, who's the creator of this one? Uh, thanks, Laura, it's uh, Rod Frazier. Hi, Rod. Hi. Uh, yeah, I, I actually, at, with this assignment, I, I was trying to struggle to find out where can I find peeling paint? <laughs> and uh, I was, I went to Faye's Country Kitchen for breakfast. And I just happened to see this building uh, right close, right nearby it. And uh, and as far as a, a low vantage point, I'm, I'm six foot five. So sometimes it's hard to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so I usually wind up shooting down, but yeah, um, I, I can see that. Uh, I could probably have um, cropped a little more on the left. I wasn't quite sure what to do with it, but I, I like the, the area in the middle because it looked kind right. of like building cancer to me. <laughs> right, yeah. And I just, again, this little curl is really nice up here and this little space right here as well. So, and the depth of field does really allow for you to just look at that space and see the clarity versus the um, areas where it falls away. Yeah, thanks, Lori. You're welcome. Peeling paint. Okay, so again, as I was saying, there's like the complementary colors. You have the blues and the reds, um, and there's just really a lot of detail in this. There's just so many things to look at. And with a lot of these peeling picture images, um, there was a part of me that wanted to see you know, it's almost like images within images because there's so much happening with the peeling that you feel like you could just really crop in in different sections of the image. I mean, there's this coming down here, um, but this one really had um, a lot of sharpness and detail in it. And there's even right here, it looks like a little bee's nest. 
So, and I just, the cropping I thought was really nice on this, the way that the window is kind of floating and then it's kind of off center. And um, the glow kind of gives it um, an empty feel to it, the glow of the window. Um, you know, that it's hollow inside, but then at the same time, I was really enjoying like seeing the um, blinds and the grain of the wood. So I thought that it, you know, it would present two different ways if you would burn this in a little bit and you could see the grain in the wood and all the details of that as well. Um, but there's, and even up here, it's just nice with the um, peeling as well. So, but the colors just really make it pop. Um, and again, just the composition with it being offset. So I thought this was a really good rendering of peeling. You really had a sense of that in this. All right. um, Mary. Hi, Mary. I got your phone call. <laughs> oh, I know. I'm so sorry about that. I was no, like, that's okay. Panicked. I was just trying to wrap up from a tennis match that my boys had. So I was like trying to just, yeah. <laughs> I just don't panic. Anyway, yeah, the colors were exactly like that. It was a, an old side street in Harrisburg. And I, I took it several years ago just because it was peeling. And I, I, I never saw anything like it before. And um, as far as the windows go, you know, you're, this, the part at the bottom, I wish had more detail and that it didn't. I, I should have brought the others. I should have like copied the top to the bottom or something just to make it look more interesting. But um, those colors were the way, it, the way it was. And the peeling was the same thing too. It was nothing <laughs> had to be enhanced on that one. But thank you for your, your, your insight there. I appreciate it. Sure. Okay, um, a rough season. So to me, this is kind of, um, I thought it was really interesting when I looked at it and then it just reminded me of kind of being the opposite of a Carnival cruise ship commercial, like the opposite of what would happen when, when those, I mean, because their, color, their commercials are so um, splashy and vivid and colorful. Um, but this feels like the, almost like the haunted nightmare version of it, you know, which I think would be kind of fun, you know, maybe. <laughs> um, so, but, and I thought, so, and then, but I was a little bit, when I first saw the image, I was kind of confused because part of me felt like, is this vignetted, you know, and then it also feels like it's in um, like a sunny day, but then there's like these ominous clouds and there's, and it kind of has like a vignetting feel about it. And I guess that's kind of lending to the ominous nature of it. I like the way that the ship kind of leads into the frame on this diagonal here. Um, but I'm thinking, I mean, I could be wrong on this. I was looking at it and I'm, I'm thinking it's an overlay of some sort because it's kind of flat when you really blow it up. So I, um, in just different areas, I'm seeing where you can see color. There, I see that there's people in here um, so I was really trying to figure out what was going on with it. And again, this is one of those where I could see like an image within an image because there's so much detail and I could see just crop sections of it. Um, I, on this, um, screen, it's not looking quite as dark in this area, but I did want there to be maybe a little less darkness in here in the, in the highlighted areas. And then it really gave the dark area is kind of a cavernous feel, almost like it would be um, hollow inside and just kind of give it more of a sense of like being a shell of a ship, which I thought would lend nicely to the way that it kind of, you know, to the treatment of the feeling of it being rusting or, you know, wearing away. But I just thought it was like an interesting kind of flip side of the carnival cruise, so. Um, I just thought it was an interesting and creative way to go about it. The other thing that I thought too, though, is that maybe this, like this here, it just could be cropped out just a little bit, not much, but just this building here, right down here that would take out the car as well. And just kind of, and it just really, that, that way there's no distracting things over in this section of the image. Okay, thanks, Laurie. This is Dennis. That's mine. And uh, that's very insightful of you. It is an overlay. 
Uh, I was trying something different. I, I wanted to experiment a little bit in Photoshop. So this is a peeling paint photo composited over top of the ship photo okay. using a displacement map in oh. Photoshop to try to get the peeling paint layer to wrap around the features of the ship. The ship is actually perfectly white. It's like a brand new ship. Okay, it's pristine looking. <laughs> I was uh, wondering, I just kept looking at it going, <laughs> what is happening here? <laughs> but, but the trick is to try to get it in Photoshop to, to wrap around the contours uh, right. using this concept of a displacement map. And I haven't done that very much. And I didn't take the time to fine tune it uh, you know, as maybe I could have, but it, but it was fun playing around with a different technique and you were very insightful for uh, realizing that it was an overlay or is. So thank you. So with it being an overlay, did that affect kind of some of the way that it was, um, you know, some of these areas that are dark? Because I was really, my brain was having a hard time like going from like the sunny feel of the day but then this really kind of dark framing around it. So did, was that a separate process that you did or was that? Well, that the process, you... it involves selecting the ship because that's what you okay. want the paint to wrap right. around. So right. the rest of the image should not be affected by the overlay. Uh, it's primarily just the selected area, which is the ship. But it was taken in midday, so it was contrasty. And of course, the peeling paint, uh, you know, the lighting on the peeling paint didn't exactly match that. Right. So. Yeah. Well, I'd be curious to see the original version to see no. what the white, <laughs> see how different it looked. I just, so. just pristine. Yeah, very different. Very different. But yeah, I can post it on Facebook for those who are interested in seeing it. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay, for this one, it doesn't have a double stop. Okay, so with this one, um, what I enjoyed about this is the anthropomorphic kind of feel that it has to it. It almost looks like two hands intertwining. Um, so, and you can just see, and so it just, to me, I interpreted it kind of, the weathering gives it kind of a sense of a shared endured hardship. Um, but the connection between the two, like that it fortifies it as well. Um, this area, and, so what I did with this is I um, thought maybe with a little bit more contrast, it had gotten just a little bit darker in the background um, so that it would make some of the details and some of the cracks uh, show up a little bit more. Um, but mostly though, the framing of it um, and the division of the frame really just causes the viewer to focus in this section and to really concentrate on the connection between the two things. I mean, I'm guessing it's some kind of gate, like a wrought iron gate or something that was painted over. Um, but it just really, um, that was my takeaway from it, that it just really had a sense of, uh, not instead of being like an animate, just kind of weathering, a, weathering, it, weathering something together, so. Okay, can yeah. we hear from the photographer? Okay, you want Jenny? To... Oh, Ginny, okay. Yeah, uh, this is actually a, a, um, a house built in 1849, and that's the window on the left and the shutter on the right. Oh, okay. The, you know, the, how the shutters would swing shut? Yeah. That's my daughter's house. Okay. But yeah, did, it's, yeah, I do, I do like the, the dark way you did that. All right, thank you. Um, Rust revealed. So uh, what caught my eye immediately on this is, you know, just on first glance, it kind of reminded me of the rings on a tree, the centers of the trees. Um, 
And, um, and it also, the way that there were certain sections with it jutting out, it felt like gears turning. And so again, with the rest, um, um, with the idea of weathering, uh, it just gave me, uh, and with the counting of the, with trees, how you count the center rings, it kind of gave me a sense of like aging um, and the idea of gears, and I may be reading far too much into this, but that's my first impression when I see it. And so it just kind of, you know, the, the constant movement of time, as well as the aging of things, that's how um, this kind of made me feel when I looked at it. Um, so there's some really beautiful areas of the peeling in through here. And I like the richness of the colors right in this area. Um, and I also like the way that you can see the um, kind of the way that the rust kind of ran. Um, I, I considered with this one as well to maybe play with the cropping because I didn't know with the way that this was, I, I was wondering if this was on a pole or something because it almost seems like it should be like a flat surface, but the depth of field here with this blurring, it kind of seems like it recesses a little bit or that it's just a little bit on a different plane. Um, but this is like really sharp and interesting. And I just wondered if maybe, again, there, there should just be a little less of the blurred area so you can really fixate on what's really interesting about it and all the detail in through here. Um, but I do feel like there are some nice lines that kind of carry your eye through the image. Um, and I just don't know if maybe I kind of either want to see this in focus or just see a little bit less of it. Um, and it also kind of feels a little bit like uh, tree bark as well. Um, some of these areas here are like a birch tree. So anyway. All right, let's hear from the photographer. Hi, Laura, this is Tom Stoddard. Um, I took this a while back at Gerhardt Machinery Company and it's, you know, rusting metal basically. Huh. But um, I, I was using a 105 millimeter um, macro lens. Okay. And, that, and that's why it has such a shallow depth of field. I mean, right. it, it is a flat surface and it might just be, I, I, I probably took the picture from a very slight angle. And I would have preferred that the whole thing was in focus, but I was kind of curious. That's one of the reasons I, I posted this picture is to see what you thought of it. Um, I just thought it was interesting. I love the, the rust patterns is what I was really after. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what caught my eye too. Yeah, I mean, the blur, I mean, kind of makes, you know, gives a sense of recession, which kind of lends to this popping. I just don't know if it competes a little bit too much to have as much of it. If you could just have a little less of it that, you know, it could still be there, but maybe just not as much, um, you know, so just a little crop here and there might make a difference. So. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Former glory. So I really um, enjoyed the simplicity of this image. Um, it has really nice, cool tones to it. Um, and even the cropping, just the way that it's kind of offset a little bit. But there's just some really nice um, ambient light that is creating just this really sharp um, peeling away with the shadow and the highlight. And um, let's see. And it's also nice the way the peeling kind of leads your eye through the frame, you know, all of these like little diagonals coming in. So I like that this is kind of stripped down and it's just about a very small area. Um, and again, it, again, not to keep repeating myself, but to repeat myself, you know, I'm wondering if this, how much was more, how much more there was to this. So this is where I'm saying like images within an image. So I do like that that's actually what's done here, um, that it's just kind of simplified and focused on a very small area of something. So, um, and again, the cool tone of it, the grays and the blues are really nice in this. Okay, let's hear from the photographer. Uh, this is mine, Lori, Mike Donovan. Hi, Mike. Um, hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Good. The um, 
the the thing that I was wanting to hear about is that the colors are a little bit funky because it, it was taken through a bus window. Oh. And it it of course they're tinted and everything, but I, I like the funkiness, and I didn't know, you know, what somebody else would think of it. But it is definitely cropped. Um, there's a couple more vertical lines to the right that I got rid of because I just wanted the white one. And it gave me a little bit of a fit because the white line is thinner at the bottom than it is on the top. And I had a terrible <laughs> time getting it straight, trying to figure out what was what. But thanks for your, your remarks on the simplifying because I, I really was after the shape, the right to the left of the, the white line is is what I liked, how it, it was sort of opposite of what's on the right of the line. Right, yeah, and if it's any consolation, I didn't notice the thinning out, or I just think because there's almost segments of the image, it doesn't bother me or I don't think about it, you know, because there's different things happening and there's, you know, it's like puzzle pieces, you know, so I didn't really notice. And it didn't it didn't upset me in the least. <laughs> so all right, thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. Home sweet home. So I recognize this. Um it's Al, I don't know if I should say it or not, but um it's Al Capone's cell. And supposedly he paid decent money to be able to have you know, nice little amenities in his cell. So, um, and so it reminded me of a photograph is a secret about a secret. And this is something Diane Orbis said, um, the more it tells you, the less you know. So, you know, there's a lot without me saying that. So maybe I should have left that part out without me saying that it was his um, cell. There's just a lot to look at in this space. And you do wonder, I mean, it could be a war torn space almost. Um, you know, these nicely preserved pieces while the walls are kind of, um, you know, falling down around it, including right here. Um, but I just think that um, everything kind of looks cluttered and tight in a way, you know, which is kind of gives you a sense. And I know that's partly because of the lens, it condensed the space, but it kind of gives you a sense of just the tightness of the cell and fitting all of these little um, niceties within it. Um, and even just the red velvet is kind of a very rich thing, but then you have the contrast of kind of being almost in a hovel kind of feeling. And, you know, there's a letter here in the, in the, on this writing station, the writing desk, and it just kind of really gives a sense of something being frozen in time. And I think this, this chair being on a diagonal just kind of almost finishes the image. If this would be any other way, it probably would maybe would just be like a little bit too much to look at, but this diagonal on this chair really kind of um, allows your eye to move around uh, the cell. Um, and again, with the sense of something being frozen in time, it's almost, um, even though these things are eroding and corroding away, um, it just, it, more his presence is in this room and his legacy, not that it's one that we necessarily want to celebrate, but definitely his legacy has been left behind while things, other things are kind of, um, you know, falling down and new things are being built. Um, so there's just like a lot of really interesting pieces to look at in the room. Um, and the light is really nice. Uh, I did darken it a little bit, not in this image, obviously, but just a smidge. And it was really nice because you really got a sense of the glow from the light. And in this area, it just created even a really nice glow. So just a hair um, it, and it just kind of finished the full effect for me um, in this space. But it's quite an interesting thing to look at when you know what it is, so. All right, let's hear from the photographer. Okay, if you're on board, you'll need to unmute yourself, please. Rick, can you tell us who the photographer is? Yeah, this was Joe Farrell. I don't think he's on tonight. That's yeah. right, he's not. He's not. <laughs> okay, so we'll be, move on to the next one.
Okay, Reflections of Antiquity. So immediately when I see this, I thought it was very graphic and the, the tones are very rich and cool. Um, and it kind of has a feel of being a painting. Um, and I think what's interesting is kind of the gravel down here, you just kind of get a feel for some of that texture and gravel like around the window pane. Um, and there's really a lot to take in in these reflections. And I'm not, I, I was trying to really take in the reflections and I'm not 100% sure if some of those were like an overlay or if they're naturally occurring. I mean, it seemed like an overlay because they didn't really consistently line up. But I also thought that this little window pane uh, lowering was interesting to look at as well. And I didn't, I was trying to decide if I wanted there to be this base and I, and I removed the base to see if it was better without it. And I kind of, I still appreciated this. And again, because I see the gravel like kind of the same way with the window pane. Um, also, um, so uh, there was a part of me also that wanted to, as far as the cropping is concerned, to maybe just see a little bit more on this right hand side. But overall, um, I think that it was nicely done. Um, I did think that brightening it just a hair, uh, let's see, it kind of created it, 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 the image because of the coolness, it's a little bit, um, and, and, and the darkness of it, the richness of it is a little bit flat, but when I brightened it up a little bit, it created more of a contrast and you could see more detail in all of the panels and all of the, um, the grain in the wood. The only thing that I wasn't sure about, but I was wondering like how much of this was uh, layered. I thought it was interesting that this window was so low to the ground. And then when I looked at the window itself, there seems to be a screen across it, um, but it doesn't, it's not just on the windows or limited to the windows, it's also on the pane itself. So um, I guess I was just kind of wondering, I was curious about what was happening with the uh, window panes in that regard. Um, let's see if there's anything else I have. Yes, but overall, I, I mean, it caught my eye immediately because it was so vivid and graphic. Um, but again, brightening it just a hair even allows you to see whatever this is. And I also thought you could get away with making it a symmetrical image and just having, um, and just kind of cropping off this side. So I either wanted to see more on this side a little bit, or I even thought about making it symmetrical um, um, in the frame as well. But I don't think that that's uh, make or break it detail, so. Okay, and that's this image. Hi, it's Elaine Shook. Uh, this is actually just a single image. There is no overlay. And um, I, I really struggled with whether or not I should submit it because it's kind of a stretch of the definition of peeling paint. You can, it's more like weathered paint and there's not a whole lot of it. Um, this was taken at East um, Broadtop Railroad. So what you see in the bottom is the gravel on the side of the tracks. Um, <laughs> I, I was undecided about whether to leave that in there, but after trying to crop it off, I decided it really kind of grounded it a bit. Mm -hmm. I, I liked showing the tracks. Um, the screen was like that. It, oh. they, just, they just tacked that screen over the entire frame or almost all of the frame. Um, but the intention of, of this photograph was not to... Um, show the peeling paint or even the weathered wood. It, it really was to capture that interesting reflection. So those reflections mm -hmm. are real and they look kind of distorted yeah. because that glass is very old and curvy and um, very interesting. Well, that's fascinating that it's a straight shot. Yeah, there's a lot going on in the panes. That's, that's neat that it's just a natural reflection, so. I did try just cropping it so it was almost square and just had the window in the center and I, I really didn't like that feel. I thought it, it felt a little too closed in. I, I could try okay. adding a little more of the red wood to the right and see if that helps any. Um, and it certainly wouldn't hurt to brighten it up a bit. Thank you for your comments. Sure.
Okay, now this one, you can really see all the flaking. It's really exaggerated. Um, and uh, I think this is really, the crop on this is a really, is nicely done uh, with the division of the frame and the leading line of the pipes coming in. Um, it's a nice diagonal. <clears throat> and, and again, it just kind of carries through with this line that's in the wall. And again, the complementary colors, this is kind of like a bluish gray with the rich orange underneath. Um, and you can really see the texture in this. Um, let's see. And I like that sense of kind of like the coolness of this against the, the warmth of the orange. It just kind of almost gives, with the melting, it, it almost feels like the paint is melting off and that almost gives it a sense of heat or fire, the richness of the, the orange against in contrast with the gray. So um, it almost feels like melting. Um, and again, I really like the way that this is cropped, but I even tried it like a tighter crop. And again, it would just kind of put you front and center with all the detail that's happening in here. So maybe just right in this area. Um, but I do think that it's nicely done with or without doing that. Um, there's just a lot of really interesting detail to see. Um, and the light is just um, lens. It's a, the light is just a really nice um, ambient light that um, lends to the overall feel of the image. Okay, can we hear from the photographer? Yeah, that's mine, Norbert Fry. Uh, uh, Lori, uh, yeah, that was taken at the steel stacks up in Bethlehem about uh, seven, eight, seven years ago. Okay. And, um, and, and actually, that's a, that's a tank. I don't know if you've ever been to the steel stacks. You can't get up close and personal to a lot of the uh, shooting areas because they got fencing and you can't get near all, I guess, because of the danger in the, the old buildings and all. But, but anyway, that was taken with a, uh, a telephoto lens and uh, on, on a tripod and it was a late afternoon sun and it was just, it was coming down on this and I thought it was pretty neat. And yes, I, I do like the idea of the pipes that kind of take your eye and it's kind of like gives you some sort of a depth to the, to the uh, photograph. And uh, actually it's, uh, uh, there's not too much else to say about it really. <laughs> yeah. I I like the detail of it. All right, thank you, Lori. You're welcome. Okay, weathered. So um, with this one again, I really, uh, I don't know, I think peeling paint really lends to all kinds of interesting color combinations because the color on this I think is really beautiful. Um, and then just the peeling away and it really gave me a sense um, the shadows added like a whole other element to it, a, a second depth or dimension. And, you know, weather to me, I kind of almost, it felt like weather because it feels like these are twigs and this kind of felt like it could be leaves or petals um, and just the greenness of it and the way that this line carries through, it almost gave me the illusion of like plants um, you know, and the highlights are really nice and the shadow. And so I kind of interpreted the theme, even though that's probably not necessarily the intention of the photographer, but I just kind of also had a sense of weather and things blowing. Um, and, you know, again, with any of these, you know, you could try rotating the image to see if this is the best way to view it. Um, I think I did rotate it and it kind of even gave more of a sense of movement, like these were blowing, but that's not necessarily the intent of the photographer but I just really thought the different color ranges of this and seeing the shadow just was a whole other way to add depth to the image. Um, and you could really see like some more detail in the peeling as well. So it kind of gave it a really organic feel to it to have the extra um, shadows in it um, along with the color. So I thought this was really nicely done as well. All right, who's the photographer? Um, Judy Kime, that's that's my photo, and and it was pretty literal in a way, um, just paint that was peeling, but I sort of like the abstractness of it, and I really like the color, um, which mm -hmm. you mentioned, so I appreciate that. It, it was actually some kind of metal structure 
that I don't know what it's for and it was round actually but this is a pretty close up photo it was taken at 70 millimeters and uh so and I, I also, you know, thought maybe in the last <laughs> book, it sort of looked like a flower, maybe. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, I appreciate your comments. I think you saw some things in it that I saw as well, with yeah. the, the colors and the organic feel. This was taken in um, Colorado, so it, it probably is very weathered. <laughs> <laughs> I would say. Yeah. <laughs> And so that's the last, that's the last one. There's 14. Okay, very good. Uh, let's, uh, if you would please unmute yourself. And let's give uh, Lori a nice round of applause. <laughs> Thanks, Lori. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Thanks, okay, Lori. This time I'd be glad to open it up to any questions that you might have for Lori. I have, I have one for you, uh, Dennis. Okay, Terry, go ahead. Where were, what was that ship? It looked like a, a radio um, towers coming up. Do you know what the ship was used for? No, I don't. Uh, I happened to be on a, a cruise ship in uh, January and February in the Caribbean, and we were docked uh, you know, near that one. So no, I don't know the details. I just thought it was a... Uh, recreational or uh, a sail ship that, you know, sailboat, uh, but, but I don't know. That Sorry. would have been, that probably would have been too, well, it's a possibility they could have put sails on it, but I thought maybe the masts that they had on there were um, uh, for like radio because you had four radar cones on the back. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're talking to a Navy guy here, right, Terry? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Anything for Lori? Okay. All right. Well, Lori, thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate your insightful comments. Uh, the folks who contributed images, thank you very much. And remember, no meeting next Monday night, but we hope to see you if you're nearby. Hope to see you in Harrisburg at 7:30 on Wednesday evening for the Urban Night Photography. Okay, guys, thank you and good night. I apologize, everybody, for my dog. If I did, <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, trying yeah. to figure something else uh, out. He, he's obsessed with me, and so he doesn't want to go to anybody else. So everybody else he has to bark at. So I apologize. <laughs> I tried to keep him out of the room, and he kept forcing his way back in. So I apologize uh, for that. Uh, yeah, we no love problem. Dogs. And we made it through the meeting in one hour flat. How about that? Wow, good Very stuff. Good. I can go relax and do something else. <laughs> Okay. Have a good night, everyone. Yep, good night. Thanks again, Laurie. Bye-bye. You're welcome.